on this book it says the CWG that is a counterweight. That basically means that you're going to uh, divide by 100 anytime that you see that. All right, so travel expenses. What do we have to think about with travel expenses? Well, in general, somebody said, I think Jason said, you might have to think about it if we have a company car, right? Um, so a big part of this is mileage. And whether you're going to get paid for it or whatever. So, do I have my own car or use my own car? Or do they give me a vehicle? That's a big thing, right? So, like on the Capital One commercial, it says, you know, limited miles. No. That's flight, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you're, you're accumulating. Um, as much as you use it, you get mileage for miles, meaning um, flight miles. Okay. okay. So you could, um, if you use your credit card all the time, then you're accumulating miles, and so you could go then on vacation or at least the plane part for free. Okay. That's what that's meaning. Okay. Um. So you got to decide. Uh, if you can, uh, again, use your own car or they're going to provide you with a vehicle or if you're the company, okay, what's the benefits of both of those things? If Justice is running his own company and he's running a giant pizza delivery service, does he want everybody to use his cars, meaning... Schrader's pizza cars, or does he want everybody to use their own cars and he pays them back? What's the advantages and disadvantages? Well, I think if you're using like, your own pizza cars, miles go on your cars, and you still get the money for your cars, and you don't have to pay someone else to use their own personal cars. Yeah. Okay. 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 Anybody a delivery person or use your own car? What do you get? Do you get? Or you, Gary has their own car. Anybody use your own car or anything? I used it once. And what what do they do for you? Okay. So some people might um, actually pay you gas mileage or whatever. I remember when uh, I worked at our. Uh, restaurant that uh, I think he, our drivers got a dollar every delivery okay sometimes um, justice or Schrader pizzas might have a delivery charge right and so you got to know that for your customers okay so the delivery charge is an automatic thing it's just an extra but then Molly's driving for justice so she's probably going to get that delivery charge at least a portion of if not all of it, okay? But what, what kind of hinders uh, some drivers is that when Derek gets his order and he sees that there's a delivery charge, then he might not do what? Then he might not tip him, okay? So that's kind of where you gotta be careful. And then all of a sudden, you know, your $15 pizzas, you got the delivery charge, you got a tip, and all of a sudden you're spending $25. Whatever, right? You didn't have to go and get it. You didn't have to, you know, those kind of things. So you got to take into that consideration. Um, when you do do this, you uh, can use, if you're using your own, you can use this as a deduction on your taxes. Okay? So um, other things that, honestly, you could do this with, um, if some of you guys would get into, like, umpire and a referee, you can use the mileage to go to games as a part of that, okay? So you can always do that. Uh, when you uh, are going to look at that, there is like a going rate for the IRS. So they, you would, uh, the company would probably base their amount that they're gonna give back to you by the amount that the IRS is giving to you, okay? So just think about that. 
When we talk about business travel expenses, what would you expect from your company on a business trip? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You eat meals? Okay. Taxis are a good one. That's a great one. What else? Okay. Food. Food, right? Do you get a, a, an allotment of food? Okay. Here's the other thing that you got to think about. Um, in all honesty, is there a lot of differences between hotels? Yeah. I mean, maybe at the high, high end and the real low, low end, but in the middle, there's probably not a whole lot of difference, right? And especially if you're going to work, you're, all you really care about is what? Probably that it's clean and it has a bed, you know, because I'm going to crash and I'm going to get up the next morning. Now a big one, especially like when we are looking for um, sending people to states for volleyball or track and stuff, the big thing is what? Free breakfast. That's a huge thing for, for us. We save a lot of money with that. Okay, so that's a, a key thing. But what I'm getting at is um, you have to know if you're given a, a check for that day and Tiff sees that her check is $200 for uh, room and board or lodging. Well, does she want to spend the $200? And if she doesn't spend the $200, does she get it? You know what I mean? So she has an option to, if it's room and board, meaning she has to eat on that too. So maybe she's thinking, well, can I find a hotel that's $100? Then I'd have $100 to eat. Okay. Um, but then across the street, basically the exact same thing, hotel room wise is only $75. So if she saves that $25, does she get that money? Would you give that to your employees? That's what you got to think about. Okay. So if justice says no, then is Tiff going to pick the lesser of the two? Probably not. She's going to stay at the highest end that she can. She's going to use all of justice's money. But if justice says, here's your $200, and if you have anything left over, that's kind of like a, a bonus for you, then Tiff might go and find the $75 one or the $50 one as long as she doesn't see any bugs and stuff, right? Or like, what if they don't do meals? Like, what if, what if, like, they do, like, a card? Because I know, like, a lot of places will give you, like, a card and just charge you a card. Exactly right. So there again, then, then that person might tell you you have X amount of dollars to spend on a hotel. Okay? And then if Tiff said, well... I'm going to make it a long weekend and I'm going to bring my husband and we're going to make it into kind of a date weekend, then uh, maybe she has to pay the difference of that amount. But that would all be a criteria. But that's a great point too, right? Somebody, they just give you a credit card. Don't you have to give them the same credit card? I hope it lets you have this. Yeah, but again, maybe they're, your company just says, go ahead and use your own. And then you just get all of their receipts and bring them back to your accountant. But that's like, that's like the same thing. I don't know if that's right. Right. So there's another one, right? So if um, I'm going to use, if I'm a business person, or sorry, if I'm a salesperson and I'm driving around Northwest Iowa and I'm using my own car, I probably don't care as much as if I'm getting a gas car. Right? And then can I use that gas card um, on the weekends? Meaning, does it matter you know, how I use that gas card? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So those are all things that you would have to think about if you're going to run a business. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so other things that we said, Olivia hit a lot of them. The taxi fare is a big one. Here's one that you probably don't maybe even know about. Okay, Porterage. Ever heard of that? Porterage would be uh, tipping people at like the hotel or your uh, airport to take your bags. Okay, so that's something. And here's another one right here. Okay, expenses in entertaining customers. Now, don't take this the wrong way, but um, a big entertainment, somebody said it the other day. I don't know if it was in here or not. What's one of the big things where a lot of business gets done? Oh. 
Yeah, okay, fun places, okay? Water parks. Well, probably not a water park. Okay. That's where my business is. Golf courses, right? If you take clients to golf courses, you're going to probably, you know, say, hey, let's go play golf. And then you got basically three hours to talk about business. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, taking them out to eat, so on and so forth. You just got to be careful again. Okay. Uh, this could easily lead to you getting fired. All right. Um, Case in point. Uh, my dad used to work for a company in Cedar Rapids. They would take people out all the time. And, uh, you know, the guy would start buying whatever, cocktails, bottles of wine, whatever. And I think one time dad said the bill ended up like $5,000. Okay. Probably like 8000 All right. Well, you can't just walk out. Uh, you'd be surprised. No, you'd be surprised. And then you would go to jail. They find you. So just be careful of those kind of things. You know what I mean? Obviously, you're going to want to show people a good time, but at the same time, you, you sh should have a budget and you should stay within that budget. Okay. It's going to be water park. <laughs> <laughs> <That's exactly. laughs> no dipping dots, so they're cool. I had those yesterday. Dude, dipping dots. That's $5. Dude, yeah. Somewhere. Two bikes for two bucks. basketball. Oh. Good. They weren't that good. I don't understand the point of them. Right. I told um, my mom ice cream and she got me that. Here we go. Here's why we're talking about this now. There's two different ways of getting paid back. Okay? You get an actual amount of expenses reimbursed. So that means I'd have to take care of all of my receipts, hand them in, and they would write me a check back. Okay? Another way of doing it is per diem. Ever heard of per diem? Yes. Okay? So per diem is how much money do I get per uh, meal, per day, per whatever it happens to be. Maybe my per diem has to account for all of those things. All right. Per diem could mean um, how you just make, you know, money. What's a job that gets paid per diem? Maybe some office jobs. What else? Business trip things. Okay. Business trip things. Another big one would be a substitute teacher. They get paid per diem, right? Per day. So they get 100 per diem. Is that per a different diem. language than per day? Per day, yeah. I think it's French. Yeah. Right? So, um, so basically, uh, again, the per diem is just a way of paying your stuff back. Yeah, for the end. Isn't that on uh, I feel like I've heard that word society. Yeah. Me too. Have we, I, have we done this before? The two of us? Yeah, we've done so much. Yeah, but that would have been about like the, the teachers and stuff. So you, you got paid for deal for day. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, any questions with any of that? Turn to page 407. We'll go a couple examples and then you can work it. All right. Erica drove her car 986 miles in May, 35% of which were for her job. The company reimburses Erica 55 cents a mile for business use. What did Erica receive as a reimbursement for the use of her car? So what do I got to do? 0.35 and then that number times. Perfect. How much did she get back? I don't think you do it. 189.81. Is that right? Uh, letter B. Oh. Can you make one of those things? Well, you would have to. That would be the sticky situation of are they being honest about what's for business and what's not? Yeah, I mean, I'm saying, like, say, like, gas would only cost you, like, 30 miles, 30 cents a gallon. Right. And they pay you. But yeah, but that 0.55 is probably uh, a portion of then your car repairs and, and maintenance, you know. So it's probably going to definitely be more than what the gas would have to be. That's a good point. All right, let me Satish drove his car 19,000 miles last year. Of those miles, 28% were reimbursed by his company at 52 cents a mile. The IRS mileage rate for that year was 55 cents. 
How much did Satish receive from his company for mileage? What amount might Satish use as a tax deduction? All right, so the first one is the exact same thing that we did in A, basically, right? Now, how do we find the reimbursement amount? Well, here's where you would go and, and do a calculation for both of those numbers with the 0.52 and the 0.55. And then anything that was over the 0.52, you should get tax-related uh, money back, okay? So whatever the IRS is, is doing more, that's what you're going to get a tax deduction. That makes sense what I'm saying? So you're, you're going to do the 19,300 times 0.28, just like we did, and then you're going to take that times 0.52. That would be the answer to the first part. The second part, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So use that same number, 19,308 times 0.28, but now I'm going to multiply it by 0.55 because the IRS was higher. Just then you just subtract those two numbers and the amount that's left over is how much you could send in as a tax deduction. 162.19. So when you went and got your taxes done, you would say, this is what I, I want to claim for my, um, as a travel expense. We're Why using minus the other one. Um, because they're, they're basically um, they're basically saying that anything um, below that. What is the IRS paying you back for? What no, the IRS is just using a different number than your company is, basically. Okay. So like factor in the point two five into the point five five. Right. So it's just like the nineteen. Well, times 0.28, though. Yeah, first. and but then yes. times the 0.55. Yes. That, that is how much that I would have with yes. respect to the government. But the 28% is like the company, though, I thought. The 28% is my business <laughs> travel compared to my oh, overall so you, you get money back from the government for business. Yes, okay. but not for your personal. Okay. Personal. Mm -hmm. All right, turn the page. Let us see. Here's where you got to be a little, um, I think it's more the second time, but or the second one, D, but be careful on these ones. C, uh, I don't know, somebody attended a business conference in another state. His approved expenses were airfare, meals, taxis, airport, porterage, a registration fee, mileage to and from airport. Okay, so this is where you got to be careful. When they say mileage to and from, and then they say 32 miles. What do you think that means? Is total or just okay? So I I believe they mean it to mean what Derek said that 32 miles was to and from. Some people take it sometimes when they read this that it was 32 miles to and 32 miles from. So they actually had 64 miles. You see the difference there? But go with Derek's thought process is that to and from means 32 total miles. Good with that? Um, hotels were 216, other expenses 54. If his company pays 50 cents a mile for use of personal cars, how much was O reimbursed? So basically, I'm going to add up everything. Where does the 50 cents come into play? Times 32. Times 32. And then I'm just going to add that amount. So if you get it, it's $1,459. But I did want to bring that one up, okay? So when they say to and fro, it does mean just times the grand total. Letter D, Susan O'Bannon spent three and a half days at a conference. She was reimbursed for traveling the 315 miles to and from the conference by personal car, 52 cents a mile. She was also paid $125 per diem. What was her total reimbursement for the conference? So in this case right here, this lady's getting $125. I would guess that that $125 is for her room and anything that she's eating. If she goes over any of that, she's paying that out of her own pocket. So again, do I eat at McDonald's or do I eat at Kale's? No, that's your choice. Sometimes McDonald's is as expensive. 
So when they say $125 per diem and they went on three and a half days, I just take 3.5 times 125. And then I'm going to do my mileage the same way. So the grand total was $609.30. All right, no problems. I don't remember how big this one is. It's 11, 12. 10, 12. That looks about Then we have a quiz tomorrow. So the test will be on Tuesday. We'll come back on Monday.